get ready. Close all your apps, grab your willpower by the balls, and prepare to do 500 pound deadlifts for your brain. From WASM Studios in San Diego, California, this is the Superior Men Podcast with your hosts Matt and Jay. Welcome to another installment of the Superior Men Podcast. On today's episode, Jay starts and talks about his weekend. And I will say I've gotten some interesting looks when I come to a, uh, a stoplight. Oh, right. Well, what are you talking about at the stoplight? Oh, you have a penis! Well, no wonder you do. Can't you think of something else to talk about? Your level 90 mage is probably fantastic right now. Well, I guess that explains the looks. All that. Much more. Fair my buggers. And welcome back to the Superior Man Podcast. I am your host, Jay. Here in the virtual studio, my good friend and co-host and cousin, good day, sir. Matthew. A good day to you, and a good day to all of you. Thank you for tuning back in to the Superior Men Podcast, probably the best podcast on the internet anywhere. We love... Not, not probably. Not probably. Definitely. Uh, it is It is arguably number one. It may, it may in fact be the best ever. And this episode is the best of all the ones that we've done up to this point. Um, it is an excellent episode, and we're glad to have you here. Thank you for joining us once again. Um, we would encourage you to continue to like our podcasts, share them with friends, family, neighbors, strangers, uh, homeless people that you know. Change their life. Change a, change a guy's life. Um, when somebody asks for a couple of dollars at a at a freeway on ramp, um, give him a few minutes of, of the superior men podcast. It could change his life. Um, I like it. We, we would ask that if you're not subscribed, that you do subscribe because that enables, um, us to, to get a sense of how many people there are out there in the world. And then we can share to even more of you because we love doing this. We love giving an opportunity to, to share this great material, um, especially today's material. Matt, we got some news and updates. Talk to the people. All right. So uh, we just uh, we we just had our classic episodes uh, um, go back into the vault um, at the end of August. So um, if you missed out, sucks for you. Uh, we do have a <laughs> upcoming um, pot or a book cast coming out. Uh, number six, uh, that's going to be Fitness Confidential. That's going to be coming out in, uh, again, if you're listening to this when, when this episode is dropping, it's coming out uh, in October next week, October 1st, uh, be having uh, Fitness Confidential released. So stay tuned for that. If you are uh, subscribed to the Superior Men podcast, uh, you will automatically get the Superior Men bookcast as well. So lucky you. Um, have several other episodes. If you haven't listened to those, do it. It's a short, uh, short form podcast. It's only a half an hour. We have not gone over a half an hour, so they are less than a half an hour uh, for each one. Uh, talking about some of our favorite books, always great to do. It's a it's a quickie, and but don't worry, it's going to be satisfying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not not that kind of quickie. Uh, you can always go uh, as well to um, our website uh, up at the top. We have a link there for great books. Uh, if you want to get sort of an idea of some of the books that we are into, that is great too. We are superiormen.com. And then up at the top, click the link for great books. That is uh, also uh, a great thing to do. Um, so uh, we also have uh, some upcoming items. Very excited uh, about uh, Sexual Magnetism book. The coming very soon. More details on that. Uh, we will be releasing via the website, via um, the podcast as well. Um, but uh, if you really want to be on 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 the the leading edge of all of this and potentially potentially getting. Um, uh, some adv uh, an advanced copy being in the know getting some discounts before we put it uh um widely available to everybody uh go to uh, we are superior men com slash join and sign up for our uh email list uh, we will be notifying all of you guys um on the email list 
you will be the first to know. So you will get it uh, as soon as we make the announcement. You don't have to wait for a podcast to come out or an article to come out. We will be notifying that inf- notifying you guys of that information uh, first. You you're, will get it first. You are our priority. But if you are not on that email list, you will. You are not, not a know. priority. You you're not a priority. <laughs> you are. You are going to be missing out. So make sure. Um, in addition to keeping updated with all of our material, um, podcasts, and our greatest articles here on the website, um, that's how we're going to be talking to you about the sexual magnetism book. By the way, I'm thinking sexual magnetism, and then having like as one of the subtitles coming soon, just like as as a as a subtitle. I kind of like that. Yep. Uh, um, 10 books every man must read. Yes, so we have an article on the website about this too. If you have not seen that, uh, go ahead and check it out. Because again, we always like to see uh, everybody's thoughts um, about this. But uh, put together uh, 10 books every man must read. Uh, we enjoy, Jay and I both enjoy reading um, our guest authors also uh, very much enjoy uh, reading if, as well. If you're a superior man, you love to read. It's it's just a thing because like you know, there's so many, there's so much material that's out there, and if you are if you're not reading, like your your world is so small. It, uh, it's true. Matt, you're Matt. This is a, a, an article that Matt put together. Ten books every man must read. He's like, oh, we'll see if I'll, I'll throw out some. So, you know, throw up a couple of lists, uh, you know, maybe a couple of books here. And and uh, before I know it, he's my articles are usually fairly long. Uh, his are a lot more kind of like to the point in and out. This is great. You know, you got stuff to do with your time. I'm like, you know what? We're in it for the long haul here. <laughs> and I went back and read this article um, when it when it came out. And I'm still scrolling after, you know. 20 30 minutes i'm still scrolling down and and he and i was like man that's this must have taken you for a while to to write this thing and you're like no actually just kind of like flowed out of me and it's because there's so much passion in each one of these books it's uh it's a th- it's a thing that we that you know as you said it's something that we love to do we liked it so much we made the book cast right right exactly that i mean and and that's really a thing we've had our great books uh section on the website for since the beginning really cuz i think it's important to kind of get an idea i think you can sort of extrapolate uh something about uh, somebody by the 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 kind of books that they read or, or what they choose to put in. It's sort of like you are, uh, an, an average of, uh, the four closest people in your life. Um, so it's sort of the same thing. And, and if you're, you're going to spend some time on, on a book, um, especially a specific genre of books, you're going to, um, I think it'll, it'll say something about you. So it gives a, a little bit of a, uh, of an idea of our philosophy at uh, We Are Superior Men. I don't know if I'd have to look. I, I said we have quite a few books that are listed on that great books section. Um, and it's yeah, and continuing, continuing to be updated too. Uh, but yeah, if you, yeah, if you want to get a, a I, I like what you said there, Matt, about this idea of the books that you read are kind of sort of who you are as a person. Well, if you want to know who, who and what the We Are Superior Men guys are about, um, that's actually a, a real good kind of fast forward to skim through it. And by the time you get to the bottom, you'll be like, oh, I kind of know who these guys are. Yep. Um, and you but- may, you probably will recognize several of the books. You may have read many of the books. I actually thought it was interesting when we put uh, some information out on, on Instagram. Um, after we, um, after we did it, we, you know, we, s- several of the comments coming back, like, oh, I've read, um, uh, you know, I've read that or, or whatever, you know, I've done, um, I've done this and that, or I've, I've read s- seven of those books. I remember one person saying, so, you know, it, it's, it's actually really cool. It's, it's neat to see too. Cause these are actually, these are great books. And I kind of consider many of these almost bedrock, uh, like really good foundation. If you haven't read some of these, uh, you really should be for the, the principles that, uh, they contain. Oh, there's there's so much knowledge here, and it I mean in so many different categories. It's politics, it's history, it's uh, political thinking, um, it's manipulation, it's control, it's sex, 
it's I mean just so many different things that are happening all simultaneously um, in this in this list and at, at any point in your life but the question is are you do you realize it's going on like we talked huh, about with 48, right. 48 laws of power just because these things are happening doesn't mean that you know that they're happening um, well, and, and, I, and I love it too I love uh, you know what for 48 laws of power talking about books you know we, we uh, a little bit ago we released a book cast on uh, 48 laws of power and it's just interesting getting people like well this is not a good way to to, to lead your life and it's like <laughs> yeah I'm pretty sure we said that and I'm pretty sure we t- we talked a lot about that it's like no it's not a it's it's not a particular a particularly moral way to lead your life and we're not you know, many of it's like, again, I on on uh, this 10 books every man must read, I put 48 Laws of Power on there. I think it's a very powerful book. It's something you should read. Am I saying that you need to then take that book and model everything that is in there? 100% no, I don't think so. Uh, however, my moral stance is going to be different than, than other people's. However, everything, even if I look at this and I go, Pfft, that is not the way to do things. Uh, there are other people who do. There are other people who live their life that way. So if they are living their life that way, you still need to understand how that works. And that that's one of them. And, and I just thought it was very interesting. Just one of the comments. I, I just remember reading that. It just yep. sort of struck me as funny. Yeah, it's... Um... And that's probably some uh, somebody who hasn't listened to the podcast and probably hasn't read the book also. <laughs> well, right. And, and it's true because I think, you know, for 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 you and I and, and Jay and I had many discussions on this particular book because I think morally a lot of the things really rub Jay the wrong way. And I know there were several of the laws you're like, I have an issue with that. And I'm like, yeah, no, totally. Uh, like uh, I get it like and and I do as well however uh your your coworker may not have that moral compunction that you do and it's just something you're like oh well yes that is true and and it's better to understand that that's this is how some people operate you know right. there are there are people who are their primary goal in life is to seek out obtain get more power and destroy and destroy anybody in the process um maybe because you don't care about them or maybe just actively because you enjoy it yeah Um, or what's 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 the the quote there some people just want to see the world burn some people want to watch the world burn yeah there you go yep and they and they if you don't know what they're doing and how they're doing it how are you going to do be able to do self-defense methods yeah how are you going to counter it to deal with it, this is yeah, part not. of the reason. This is part of the reason why the average CEO reads, you know, four to five books a month, about sixty a year, according to Inc. Magazine. Um, Crazy, right? That's a lot of books. That's a book a week, uh, more than. And if you're reading a book a week, then you are absorbing so much data that's going to put you in a position to have power, and in many cases, power over other people. Um, so and just a, a better, greater understanding. You typically don't. And I, and I, so what's really funny, uh, uh, like for me, I, uh, never enjoyed reading until I was out of college. Really? I, I did not enjoy reading. Nope. I, I read a few books because I had to, you know, in school and, and that kind of stuff. I did not read for pleasure at, at all. Hmm. Um, and I, I have definitely got into it. I mean, granted that's, that's been a while, but so, you know, for half of my life, uh, you know, so far I didn't really read books for fun. It just wasn't something that I was interested in and you get something and, and coming from that, that standpoint, you get something from books that you don't get from any other, uh, medium really, because, you know, those of you who, have read a book and then watch the movie adaptation of that book you there's things that are missing because you can do things in a book that you can't do um you know on screen so it it, and it's great uh but you know you can also pick up a book and put it down at any point you there's many things to do and and you know we talk about how to how to consume your book your books there's so many ways to consume your books now there's almost no excuse 
you know, I, I, I say uh, um, in the article, I, I talked about, well, what about, um, you know, we, you don't just have to carry around a physical book with you anymore. You can have, you could buy a, a, an e cop like a Kindle copy of it. And, you know, and I have a, the Kindle app on my phone. Do I like reading on my phone? Not particularly, but I do. Um, you know, and then I have that it's, synced across on my tablet. I was going to say whatever. the sync, the syncing is, is fantastic. Um, because now you, uh, across, you have four different devices. You got an iPad, you got a phone, you got a, uh, a laptop and you can continue to read back and forth across all of those devices, uh, seamlessly, which is, you know, that's fantastic. You can also carry how many, how many books can you carry now in your, in an iPad? All yeah, of the books? Right. Yeah, all of the books. Yes. Pretty, I mean, really, I or... Know, more books than you could ever read in a lifetime can now be fit on, like, what, half a gig? Yeah, right. Of, pretty much. Of, of data. Like, all you could read every single day for the rest of your life, and you wouldn't even hit a, a gig of data. Yeah. Um, it's it's spectacular. Um, I, I'm actually really interested, Matt, in the article. I haven't asked you about this yet. You said something about a new ink in the Kindle e-readers. What, what is that? So, uh, like, there's e-ink technology um, in the in the Kindle readers. Well, in in some of them, I had from. I'm actually staring at a a device that I have had now for like almost ten years. I I realize this because I had to. They do had some them ten years ago. Updating, yes. So I wow. have a Nook device uh, from Barnes and Noble that's old, really old. You can't really even find it anymore. Um, well, you can't find it anymore. It's nine or ten years old, and it's what I first. Um, it was my first e-reader that I had. I'm holding it here in my hand. It uh, it has what they call e-ink technology, um, and basically, it's like think of your like old school digital watches. Uh, how that or like a calculator, uh, like a regular calculator. What that looks like, how. It's not difficult to read. It's not like looking on a screen. That's how this um, how this is. And Kindle keeps going forward with those. Although I like this older one better because I can charge it. I can put the you know I can put an SD card in it and put as many books as I need to or want to on it, or download it from Barnes and Noble if I need to. Um, but then I can have th- those books and the battery lasts for a month and a half. Oh my goodness! Um, and so, and and my wife purchased a, a a newer Kindle that has the same thing, and it has a backlight to it. Mine doesn't have a backlight, so I need to have ambient light in the room to read it. Um, but it's real light, small. Everything's fantastic with this. I recommend having one of those if you are a reader. But I know there are some people who are just like, ah, oh, I just love having the book in my hand and and whatever. Don't use that as a crutch. That's my only thing, because I've heard so many people say, well, I just need to actually have a physical book. Okay, as long as you make that a priority, then great. But if you're not making that a priority, you're using it as an excuse to not read. And that is, in my in my opinion, that's unacceptable. You don't want to do that. No, you're, there's so many great things that are out there now. Um, find one of them and use it. Um, I... Uh, it's surprising how many people I've talked to that have an iPad that have not used their iPad as a book. Um, the Amazon app in, or the Kindle app in the iPad is so smooth free. Um, and it basically turns your iPad into, um, a perfect, pretty much a perfect page size. It's bigger than it would be in most books. So you can, so you can adjust the text so that it fits for you. Not as easy on the eyeballs as a, as a Kindle, but, you know, so many people out there have iPads or tablet uh, computers nowadays. So use or, that. Use or that. your phone. I mean, anything. And, it really doesn't matter. It, they sync across it. Yeah, I mean, sure, sure. whether you use Kindle, there's Google Books, there's a bajillion things you can go. Well, we have a, a couple of them here um, that we can suggest. But also on the other end. Audiobooks. Yeah, audiobooks. Uh, so I I was just looking at my audiobook purchases and I don't. So I have coming up on on 200 um, audiobooks in my Audible account right now. Wow! And um, I'm a I I'm a huge fan of audiobooks. If if you have a commute to work, why? Yep. I was gonna say if you're in a, if you're commuting, 
like yeah. you should be doing audiobooks. <laughs> yeah, why why not? I mean, granted, Absolutely. you're hopefully if you're commuting, you know, you could be listening to our podcast too, which is awesome and and good for you. Um you but, could do the book you could do the bookcast yeah, and do, and and you know, get through get through those things and then once you're all hyped up on the book because each one of the books in our bookcast obviously awesome. Um, then you can go and start listening to the book itself, which, by the way, we also have links to in our in the show notes for each one of those. So you could go straight there. Yep. Um, but but if you're on a, if you have any kind of a commute, um, that's a fantastic thing. I my new thing now uh, after doing the the marathon is I love to do audiobooks while I'm exercising. Oh, there you go. Um, that's my new thing. So I wake up in the morning, go for, go for a run, get to listen to a book while I'm running. So I kill two birds with one stone. Um, that time would just be more or less, um, unused time while I'm exercising, you know, maybe could put on some music or something like that. But, and I've done that for years, but using an audio book in that same space is incredible. I don't necessarily recommend it. Like if you're doing lifting weights and stuff like that, because you know, you may want to be paying attention while you're, well, while you're although, lifting that 400 pounds. I know people who do. I know. I mean, there's nothing. They, they, they do weight lifting and listen to audiobooks at the same time. Yeah. I mean, wow. there are people wow. who do all, I mean, Cardio is usually your better one because it's just sort of mindless. But, you know, if you whatever, whatever it is you're doing, however it works for you. That being said, and I know Jay and I have talked about this. I don't like when I'm working out. I don't like listening to audiobooks. like that doesn't work for me. Um, but everybody has their own thing. And I would um, I would strongly recommend trying it if you haven't, because that is a good thing to do. Uh, um, it's it's such a it's such a great convenient you know it it fulfills all the plugs all those plugs where you can get okay I can do all these things all at one time and then especially for a lot of us we don't necessarily have time our time the whole rest of our day is full even if you're in your compute commute you're making phone calls you're coordinating stuff and whatever um, so to have that time that you can get your exercise and get some get some good material in your brain every day. Uh, very, very powerful, whatever. But like you're saying, Matt, whatever works best for you. Uh, having said that, there's also uh, Audible's the best. Um, there's just no question about it. Audible's the best. There's a reason Amazon picked it up. Um, they basically have, if there's an audio book, Audible has it. And it's fantastic. If you, haven't much. Signed, if you haven't signed up for Audible, they we have a link in here. It gives you first two books for free. Um, take advantage. Like, do it. Even if you're going to cancel at the end of it, um, just just sign up for it because well you probably won't cancel it because by the time you're done with no. that you're like well that was fantastic let's do that again and, uh, and I mean I've given I've given Audible memberships to you know probably a half dozen or a dozen people and they're an amazing gift um, it'll that's one of the very few things of the modern world that I think that is really changing um, how people are consuming you know just information. Yeah. is is audiobooks like it's I, I had no idea how big a deal it is and more and more people are like oh so i was listening to this book the other day it's like i hear listen to books almost more than i'm hearing uh read books nowadays right 100 uh, percent. i mean there there's so many on whatever topic there's a, a big series that i like to go through called uh the great courses um i love those they're fantastic it's actually college lectures which you know who to thunk you'd be actually want wanting to do that but choosing to listen to to college on purpose yeah no i mean so i have like i'm just looking at three of them right now just a sort of i got right around the same time and you know one of them's 31 hours the other one's 12 hours the other one's 24 hours you know i mean they're long and you can you can get a lot of really cool um information in them and it's like they're really neat to listen to so I'm, my wife turned me on to those. So those are those are great. I, I love listening to those as well. Again, just depends on what you're, you know, what you're interested in. You can find out whatever that is. I mean, shoot, they have erotica on there that you could listen to. Uh, maybe hard to to to, uh, to listen to that um, with. While you're- while you're while you're yeah. in public although i will say um i've been reading a, a great book um we, we cover it in uh, episode 30 on our uh, how to turn your woman uh, into a nympho the sexual satisfaction series i'm listening to the book she comes first by ian kerner in audio form and i will say i've gotten some interesting looks when i come to a uh, a stoplight 
and there's a couple <laughs> cars and I got my windows down. Windows and, down. And and he's like, so insert two fingers into her vagina and pull in a come hither motion. And the girl next to me is looking over me like, this guy is just disgusting. I'm right, like, right. How you how you doing? Yeah. Hey, um, <laughs> hey. So anyway, you want me to try this out on you? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, let me. Well, oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had no idea. No, keep driving. Oh, man. you keep have driving. a penis. You have a. Oh, good. Ah, ah. It's not working. But no, like so. The 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 e readers are great. I, it, you know, if you want to buy a a piece of technology that is dedicated just to books, do that. Audiobooks are great because you can do it on whatever your device is. If you have a, um, so it's one of the things that I kind of differ with. Uh, if you have a, an Alexa device, um, you can just do your Audible books right from there, which is cool. Um, otherwise, you could just play them off of your phone, off of the Audible app. But if you have an Alexa, you could just say, "Hey, play," you know, my my audiobook, and it'll just resume back the last book that you were listening to at the la- at the most recent time and it'll just start playing it. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know Alexa did that. Yeah, it's pretty cool actually. That's, that's pretty that's pretty slick. There's also a couple of other options uh, if you're looking for outside the box and you want to save a little bit of money on your books uh, for less convenience and less options but a little a little less money. There's a company called Rakuten um, and they have a Kobo app that enables you to do ebooks. Um, I've, I haven't heard great things about their ebooks, but their audiobooks, I've probably listened to a half dozen of them now, and you can buy, buy them for $10 a piece, so it's cheaper. Um, they, don't, they don't have nearly the selection that Audible does, so that's definitely an issue, but the app is, is smooth, and I've used that multiple times. Um, two other options for you, too, for audiobooks there's a, an app called Overdrive that all you need is a library card, and you can get free audiobooks. Wait, do uh, libraries exist still? I haven't been in one. I yeah. assume so. Yeah, I, mean, I assume. I assume so. Oh, I, you know, it's I, actually. I got... It's funny. I actually take like because I bring my kids there uh, to to get books and check out books just because they they read so much. Um, you know, with school. So, I mean, it's I could go and you know buy a whole bunch of books to them. They're going to read you know once and then not have no interest in reading them again. But you know, a lot of times we end up just going down to the library and and they check out books and. It's uh, it's a pretty cool thing. Um, they like it because you know, then it's an unlimited. Wait, so I can, I could have any of these books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any of it, them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to give them back, but yes. And and it's so neat to be able to use this OverDrive app because once you have your library card, and you're gonna have to reserve them in advance, especially if it's a popular book. But you can uh, read using e-readers. You can read these books. Um, you know, temporarily will be downloaded into your Kindle account or your Google Play account. Um, and then you, I, I believe I believe the Google Play. I'm not 100% sure, but I know Kindle does it. But anyway, you can... Yeah, you like be, check out the audio book you, and you have you, it for a certain yep, amount of time. You have it for a couple of weeks. Um, every book that I've wanted to listen to, it's been a two-week wait for those. Um, yep. But I suppose if you're just finding random random books, you may have less of a less of a wait time. You can also do the same thing: check out an electronic book and read it as well using that same app. So the, that's a that's a pretty sweet option as well. Uh, Matt, let's uh, let's go. We have a we have a list here. Do you want to do you want to move towards that list? Should we talk about it? We do have a, a list of a, a a list of our books here, right? Yeah. So. Let's let's just run through because again, I, I mean we're not going to sit here and dissect each one of these books, uh, but let me just run through a list here. We're just going to be- talk be- larger before, themes before we before we talk about that. I want to talk about like how we came up with the list. So these books here. So I came up. So there's there's ten of them here, and I'm like, you know, and it, it was actually funny. I didn't realize as I was doing this, I only have one fiction book on there, which. Um, you know, and I had said like I I need to read more make believe. Um, I'm I'm more of a fan of nonfiction, um, in general. Um, however, I love fiction books. So I, I in my uh in my library, I would say I probably it's it's probably sixty forty, um, nonfiction to fiction. But I I there's there's by no means am I putting these books forward and going like, yeah, well, no, it's uh, there's not much to to get from um, 
from our uh, from our fiction books because there's a ton that you can get out of it and it, oftentimes it's you have to infer and it's a higher level of thinking in order to grasp the concepts because usually they don't just tell them to you they they they're demonstrating whatever that is by the character's behavior but Mm. So which, I, which, which, by the way, if you want to dig into that a little bit, make sure to check out our, our podcast and article, 48 Laws of Power and the Game of Thrones. Yep, yep, great, great one, uh, great article for that. Um, but, so I was coming up with books that, like, you could, that are relatively easy to digest, um, good information, um, and um, almost a timeless applicability to them so it's sort of what i was looking at when i was coming to or uh, going through this list um a lot of them too where i'd say like it's just a lot of it is just more of what works for you um or what works for sort of the the modern man so i with that being said i have the oldest book on this list is the prince by um machiavelli and that was a cool book to read because, you know, you sort of hear about it and you have pseudo intellectuals talking a lot about uh, about Machiavelli and and whatever. And uh, or, you know, we've we've heard the term Machiavellian uh, applied to like a behavior trait for for people. But I love that one. It's a it's a an old book um, written in the 1500s. Um, and but it's it's super cool to look at it. You go like, wow, you're reading this, and and if you just sort of apply that to modern political life, we 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 sort of think that we're in a in a complete bubble, right? As of right now, we're just like, ah, the world has never been this politically upside down. Uh, yeah, it has, and forever it is. As long as there's people who disagree on whatever, then you have this issue. And, um, so that, that was probably like the oldest one that I had on there. Um, but it has right. so much applicability. It, it I was going to say that that's a, a, one of the, one of the books kind of like all, all these books, they're all kind of timeless. Um, but 1984 and the <laughs> Prince feels like they could have been written almost at the same time. They could have been written last week. I mean, I mean, and that is to say, 1984, written in what 1956, somewhere in that range. Yes, I believe um, so. And and the Prince, written in 1656, no, six in the 1600s, and uh, and then now we're 2019, and it's like, is there is there any less applicability of those those particular books? Um, no. Well, laws no, no. Power, and that's 48 what... laws of power goes goes all the way back. Well, no, right. the the prince was written over five hundred years ago. Yeah, it was yeah. written in fifteen thirteen. Oh, was it fifteen? Fifteen? Okay, all right. Fifteen so thirteen. Sixteenth century beginning of the sixteenth century. Correct. It, it was it was published uh, about fifteen years later. So it was published in fifteen thirty two. And that's sort of based on just just the point of that book and why it was written and and whatever, which is fine. But. Um, but yeah, no, that book is 500 years old and, and doesn't, doesn't feel like it at all when you read it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, there's some stuff where you're talking about royalty or whatever, but it's like, well, you could apply that directly I to mean, you just, just call it just now. instead of saying royalty, you call it, uh, this is a CEO or this is right. a, this is a speaker the speaker of the house here, or this is a billionaire, uh, you know, oil, uh, magnet here, um, and and uh, ni- 1984 was written um, in, well, 1948, uh, 1949. 49, 49, okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is, these are, these are books that are, but like you're saying, totally, totally timeless as far as, as far Absol- as that goes. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And let, let me just go just real quick. We'll just, we'll just dive down into what this, the list of these books just real quick. But so... Uh, I can't hurt me by David Goggins, Extreme Ownership by Jocko Wilnick and Leif Babin, The Prince by uh, Niccolo Machiavelli, uh, Twelve Rules for Life and Antid- an Antidote to Chaos by Jordan B. Peterson, 1984 George Orwell, 
Um, the 48 Laws of Power by Robert Green. Eh. Green with an E. Uh, next one, Rational, The Rational Male by Rolo Tomasi. Number eight, Way of the Superior Man by David Data. Uh, Mindful Attraction Plan by Athol K. And The Way of Men by Jack Donovan. So those are what made my list. Uh, that's not to say if we were to really go, what is a comprehensive guide of books that everyone should read? <laughs> that, that that list would be a lot longer. But um, it, you should be you should have read or be reading or plan to read all of these books. Well, there's uh, there's a couple of things that I would I would say that are specific about this list as well, and it's a it's a an excellent list. It really is. Um, these are books for men. And, the, you know, the article yes. here is 10 books all men must read. Well, these are books that it's not that women won't appreciate and value the, the knowledge in there. And 1984 is a novel, probably the most open ended as far as that goes. Um, I will say, though, that these books are all written by men, mostly to men. In, in terms Correct. of the the way in their their kind of their thinking and their their prospects, um, these are all books that need to be read multiple times. Yeah, the, no, every one of these, some of them more than others, uh, as far as like where I say like this book needs to be studied. Twelve Rules for Life. I mean that that that, that yeah. is. Yeah, I really I really like your your comment actually on that. Um, just on our on our Instagram, one guy was talking about it, and you're like, yeah, it's not a book to read; it's it's a book you study. It's I I, it I is. feel if they haven't already, I'm I wouldn't at all be surprised if they don't uh, teach classes on Twelve Rules for Life. Well, they if they haven't, they absolutely I, should I, be because, because there's so much there's so much in there. <laughs> there is there's so much that's that's in there, and you go, well, it's just common knowledge, you know, for a lot of it, and you go like, yeah, but no. Um, I I I love it. That is a fantastic book. Yeah, but... that one. And then uh, the one other thing that I would say that kind of ties these all together is that every single one of these is gonna push you uh, outside your comfort zone. Yeah. You're yes. you're not gonna be able to just read through this and go, oh, that was cool. You're gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna have to process that one for a minute here. Um, if you're paying attention while you read. Um, and you will be forced to pay attention to each one of these books. None, none of these are, <laughs> I, I will say we could add that to the list of, of descriptions for the list is not light reading. <laughs> none of right. these are, none of these are just like, Oh, that was, that was good. I enjoyed that one. That was, that was a nice summer, you know, beach read. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, I was just relaxing by the pool yeah. reading it. You yeah. Know. These are the kind of these are the kind of books that if you take them with you somewhere, somebody else will be like, "Oh man, look at that! You are reading. You're reading Extreme Ownership. Um, that is such a great book. I've really enjoyed." Blah blah well, blah. And and like for me, when I was reading uh, The Way of the Superior Man, which I love, uh, it, it's I don't know why it's just a fun. Uh, a fun story, I guess. But, you know, like I got singled out when, when I was reading that book, I was in Costa Rica reading this book just cause we were having a lazy day sitting by the pool literally. And I was reading this book and I had, uh, I, I had somebody stop me. Mm. So you actually like, came up, he came stopped up me to you and like noticed yep. the book and started to, started to discuss. Yep. And he and I were chatting about the book. So I, it's, I mean, like in Costa Rica, <laughs> wow. like, it, I mean, it was crazy, but it was, it was awesome. Cause it was like, Whoa, oh, look, th this is a thing like this exists. We're, we're out like, uh, you know, people do notice if you like, I judge people. If I see them reading a book, I'm like, <laughs> Oh, um, or, you know, maybe it's just like, huh, I don't know what that book is. I'm going to. I'm going to Google now that I, real quick and look at it. What's going on? They've, they've, read, a, they've read a book yeah. that I don't know. You're, you're curious about it. Yeah, curious. So, I mean, it, it it's a thing, but, like, I mean, really, that, that's that been the only book that I've read out in public that I've had somebody actually stop me and have and engage in a conversation about the book. Um, <laughs> and, you know, he was on vacation. I was on vacation, you know, and, and we, we had a good little discussion about it. It's awesome. Really cool that that exists. Uh, I think that it's, it's a really cool concept that a book immediately can bond you with somebody else that's read it. 
um uh, yeah that's absolutely a, that's an amazing that's an amazing community that kind of like each book comes with and i think maybe one of the kind of long-term goals you, you might say of a an author would be to have a book that w is able to do that you know is able to bring everyone together well, you know and it's funny i was actually at a uh, um uh, my my children's open house uh the other day and the teacher was talking about he goes you know I want I want the kids to get excited about reading in general. I want them to to enjoy reading, and not because uh, uh, for a lot of the kids they have to take tests on it. And they go, you know, just think about a book that you're reading. You're not excited to read the book and then be like, yeah, let's take a test and see how much I remember from this book. Uh, what you're excited about is to share and talk about with other people, which is sort of how our book cast was born anyway. It's fun to talk about and share our thoughts um, and book suggestions with other people just for that reason. And that was my my primary purpose for uh, for this article. Uh, it, it's um, it's so neat to be able to connect there and as we get to the end here we'll even you know we'll kind of open it up and go okay so there are some people that on our on our instagram adding some of their books that they feel like should be on the list um we would love to hear from you as well so um and and we'll we'll ask again later but you know you could start thinking right now um what books would be on your 10 top 10 um, and yep. we want to we want to hear from you to find that out because we would love to discuss those things as well. This to say this is the only top ten list that we'll ever have for books um, on the WeAreSuperiorMen.com. Uh, no, no, we'll be adding more for sure. But yeah, and if you and, and if you want, send us an email um, podcast at WeAreSuperiorMen.com. Great, you could do that. We we can include that in the future. Or if you want to, you can also go leave us a comment on. Um, on the website on that article and um, we'll include it there as well so we are com, uh, and it's 10 books every man must read it'll probably be up there on the home page um, you know just depending on when you're listening to this but um, it'll be up there or you'll be able to find it um, 10 books every man must read and that's something to to look at as well so just be aware of all of this there's there's lots. Give us your top ten. I love it when I hear people and they go, "That book was shit." Okay, well then, where's your What's list? What's your list? <laughs> yeah, exactly. give me give me your top ten, and then I, you know, because obviously it's really easy to shit on somebody's point, and it's a lot harder to come up with something on your own. So give me your top ten. I want to hear. I want to challenge you guys. If if you have that, we'll have the link here in the show notes, obviously to um, to the article um, to the website as well. But um, some people don't listen to, or look at the show notes or even know what that is when we say that. But um, if if you're if you're curious it, what the show notes are, if you've never used them before, um, when you download the or when you look at the podcast, the very beginning uh, of the podcast, when you bring it up, there is a a description description, a description of the the basic notes, and we have links and. Uh, all kinds of cool data and stuff in there. So make sure to check the show notes out for all of the Superior Man podcasts that you listen to and the book cast as well. We try and include um, valuable data and sometimes there's extra things that are in there as well. Little uh, little bits and pieces that you might enjoy. So make sure to check that yep. out. Uh, Always good. Um, so let's let's dig in for a couple minutes here into your uh, into our ten thing ten books that every man must read. Mm -hmm. Um, let's so so these out of these out of all the books that we have on the website and out of all the books that you've read, these are the ones that kind of like seem to to rise to the cream of the top. I'm going to ask you really quick here for a couple of these book. Uh, what was it? that made you go this book in particular out of all of them i wanted to include why why that particular book so say uh you know and our 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 listeners are somewhat familiar with can't hurt me by now if you're a guy listening and, and in the manosphere you've come in contact with can't hurt me you probably heard david goggins on a podcast so so we'll skip can't hurt me just because it's so fantastic <laughs> um but let's go to number two on the list that maybe not quite as well known um certainly certainly fairly well known why would why did you include extreme ownership on this list jocko willink and leif babin so that was the most recent book that i've 
that I've read actually that is on this list. Um, and I, f- I fell in love with it immediately. I mean, really this, this is great for if you're a parent, if you're a boss, if you're a subordinate, you should read this book. Like it, it helps you in any hierarchical relationship that you have in your life, whatever that ends up being. So if it's, you know, uh, uh, your boss or you have subordinates, um, your children, you know, whatever. Um, or, you know, say you're a teenager and you're living under your parents' rule, you know, that kind of thing. It's the same deal. But basically, or you're a 30-year-old like, living in your parents' basement uh, under their rule. Uh, and and uh, uh, we're, not, we're not judging because you're probably great am, at World of Warcraft, let's be honest. I'm judging. I'm well, judging. Your level ninety, I'm... your level ninety mage is probably fantastic right now, um, but let's. Be... I really like playing World of Warcraft. It's 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 really super exciting Let... when I play it. Uh, so uh, it's and I'm a level ninety seven mage, so I just learned the the fire spell. The... and it's it's pretty fantastic. Um, there's probably about thirty percent of our audience that you just pissed off right there with that with that little with that little statement. Uh, I'm just saying it's <laughs> it's pretty much how they are. So uh, I don't think that I'm really saying anything out of turn. It's it's really how they are. So <laughs> they're mom, mom. Uh, I'm you, my bathroom. You have to, bathroom, you have to keep mom. dealing with your parents at, when you are living at home. And nowadays, especially here in Southern California, more and more more and more people live at home. <clears throat> I love what you're saying about yes. the hierarchical relationship. Because yeah, everybody's in a hierarchical relationship. It's fun to say. Of some, of some point. It is. But it, 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 it's very true, though. But it tells you how to be a good leader, a good follower. Yes. Through this concept of of being that owner with whatever. Owner, you know, owning like, the situation and going, okay, what is my responsibility now where I'm currently at? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm a private. Maybe I'm a, a captain. Maybe I'm a general. Every there's everywhere across the board you have to take ownership if you're going to really succeed. Absolutely. You you must take ownership. If you do not take ownership, uh you know, it's 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 funny because it's something I tell my kids, because I tell my kids where like uh well I I I tone it down for them, but I say like, you know, excuses are like buttholes. Everybody's got one, they all stink. And that's pretty much the case if your boss says hey do this and then you don't and then they come back and ask you well why didn't you do this well it's this reason this reason this reason excuse 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 and that's all that they hear um you know instead of just owning up to whatever the thing is and this also applies to if you have subordinates if you're telling people what to do and they don't do that it's really easy to be like, well, that person fucked up. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. They aren't behaving the way that they should be behaving. So since they're not, uh, I'm not to blame, clearly, because I told them to do it and they didn't. No, you you own up to it. You know, it, it, <laughs> and we were, my wife and I were walking away from the school, um, our, our, our kid's school. And there was a sign up, you know, on, on the multi-purpose room on the outside facing the, the, the street. And it said, have a great summer. Um, and you know, uh, the fifth grade promotion at, at, you know, at this time and whatever. And I'm like, okay, well that was three months ago. Um, <laughs> And it, and it's funny because I was we were I was like I can't believe that you know they still have that on there and and you know and 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 my wife was like well maybe it was just the you know the the person forgot to do it or whatever and I said the principal is here like it's that's her job mm. it's her responsibility mm. she may not be the one who's doing it but she's been there so why the hell hasn't that sign been changed in three months. Mm. So excuse, 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 whatever you want to put on there. Well, this person wasn't or they didn't do this or blah, 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 blah. You know what? Bottom line, buck stops at that principal. She's the boss at the school, period. End of story. So who am I? Who would I blame for that? Her. And rightly, period. And rightly so. 
Rightly so. Yeah, I mean, every organization, it, all of the filtered down responsibilities of that entire organization rest on whoever's on top. Um, and, and and that's how it should be. Yep. It is their responsibility for it. Yeah. Does that mean that they do it? No. No. Not necessarily. No, probably, but probably they're not. responsible for it. Probably not. Or just... Just the same thing you say, like, well, what if that school is super successful? It's the, you know, best academic, uh, you know, school in the nation. Okay, well, who takes the credit for that? Well, the principal. I mean, that's the top person there. Did the principal, are they in there teaching every class to all, you know, hundreds of students? No. But they bear the the benefit of that. So they also bear the responsibility. And the, and the author's points on this are just so good where it's like, no, you own it. You own it, period. Good, bad, whatever. It's your responsibility. If you're the one who's in charge, it's you. Done. That's it. It's, it's the exact opposite uh, of victim thinking. Ah, which, exactly the, oh. the polar opposite so if you feel like yep. you can't do something in your life you feel like you're stuck you feel like things are you know if only this person would do this or if only your kids would do this if only your wife would do this if only your boss would do this if only the people under you would do this uh, this book tears that ex- all of your excuses right away <laughs> just yep. just eliminates it, them and that's why like for me that hit it where it's like if you can just understand that point you know, you're, you're, and you can internalize it. And to me, it was very, that's a very easy, um, uh, concept to internalize, but it's been almost on the tip of my tongue, uh, ever since I've, uh, re- actually, and I, I didn't read the book. I listened to it, um, the podcast or the, it's more of a podcast style, but it's, uh, by the authors. Cause they actually go, they, they switch off chapters when they're reading it, which is awesome. So I highly recommend the, the audiobook version of it just for, for that reason. But it, just the whole point, they have cool war stories. They have lots of cool stuff. It's great. You should, you should be reading this book. Yeah. It's, it's so good. Um, the, I love the, also the, it's a, a principle, um, and applied, in military scenarios and these guys that were in uh iraq um during some of the most the most brutal fighting in all of iraq um during their and as as navy seals and their time there and then afterwards applying these same principles that they used in the battlefield into corporate situations that's and great calling all of these various executives and middle managers and sometimes uh sometimes more subordinate levels calling them all to task and going so, you're in trouble so well, it's, it's good uh, well th- I, it is it's great and I, I mean that was why that one really stuck out to me i'm gonna put you on the spot here sure. jake because i know we haven't talked about this what about you which which one of those books stood out for you um because i think you've read I've read, I've read, all, I haven't read every word of all of them, but I've read every word of everything except for the rational male and uh, ah, okay. the prince. Okay. Um, I've read, I've read some of the prince and most of the rational male. Um, the rational male, I think is probably the one that's, um, it's, th- is the densest reading for me. Yeah, it is. Like, it is. I, I get in, I read a little bit and I stop. I think maybe it's the typeset for the for the printed book yeah it's it, <laughs> i i agree it's really it's really small font and it is a it's not a page turner because it takes you a while to get through it and yep. there's a lot of really good it's a it's a fantastic book hard to hard to uh i ha, i had to take breaks and i think i yeah. may have even said that on there i was it, it was one of the things for me i really had to read it and take time away from it and then read it again absorb then, absorb yeah. read absorb yep. yeah there's a there's a lot of of data and but um i would say one one of the ones that really stands out to me that's just like as i read through the list here just looking at it it kind of like stands out kind of like glowing a little bit is the way of the superior man okay we don't really talk uh, I, I haven't really talked much on the podcast about where the term superior men and we are superior men comes from um, I, and I've actually, when I tell people the name of our website, they're like, that's catchy and kind of, kind of bold and ballsy. Like, <laughs> I like it. Um, 
a couple of people told me like are you guys like some kind of a splinter group you kind of you know more neo aryan kind of a superior <laughs> thing um like what why uh, or um what makes you so superior you know right right and that it's a little arrogant almost. it's a little yeah it's a little a little bit of a like we're amazing and maybe by implication you're not as amazing you know right um the truth is the term superior men came from the book the way of the superior man by david data mm-hmm. and there is it came from a book a a, a a pretty informal uh book group that that we had several years ago and just sort of morphed into the web page and then sort of morphed into <laughs> uh, writing articles and then sort of morphed into a podcast Not a, and, pod, a podcast yeah. and and you know the the fame and fortune that we now enjoy right Right, exactly. Um, the, um, the world, the world um, conquering podcast that we currently yeah, have here. Exactly. Um, this this way of the superior man book by David Data, probably for the average guy, totally unknown. Um, even yeah. even within the manosphere, I rarely see it mentioned. Not never, but rarely. And and I think a lot of a lot of times too, it's really come across a little strangely i think a lot of people look at it as a uh, uh almost uh, uh, feminine almost which is which is weird to say but it's a great it's a great balance of a book it's a it's a it's a good book uh it's a it's a tremendous book um uh, let's let's see i'm matt you and i were sending some some texts back and forth regarding this book recently i'm gonna read a uh. quick quote from this <laughs> um because it's just you're send me a couple of them okay so this is this is a, a an example of the kind of writing that's in the way of the superior man just so you can kind of get a flavor of it uh the most loving women are the women who will test you the most she wants you to be your fullest most magnificent self she won't settle for anything less she knows it is true of you. She knows in your deepest heart you are free. You are Shiva. Anything less than that she will torment. And, as you know, she's quite good at it. <laughs> so we're, we're referring to Shiva. You're, sh- we're talking about her wanting your fullest, most magnificent self. Wait, we're uh, talking about Hindu gods? What are, what are we... Uh, it's, it's not the most uh, mechanical... Uh, Mask, uh, superficially masculine, nuts and bolts, spears and shields, uh, kind of like like own the world, dominate your dominate your life, take your woman in the back and ravish her. It's it's a it has elements of all of those things, but it also has this sense of understanding why, and specifically with women, why they act the way that they do and what they really need for for you. Um, so as a tool to kind of understand the feminine mind and this idea that women want men to be men so that they can be women and which is a big, big problem that we're currently facing right now. A lot of absolutely act like women, not because that they want to be women, but because they've never been taught what it feels like and what it looks like to be this strong, masculine man who has the capacity to enable a woman to be a soft feminine woman um these are not things that are at war with each other these are things that when a woman is in that state and the man is in that state everything functions beautifully yeah it's it's very true and you know it's one and and actually so it's it's the quote that i included on the uh um on the article for this too uh my my favorite quote quote from this book and it's very related to the one that jay just read too because i I sent a couple and i was kind of going back and forth on which one but your woman knows your weaknesses better than anybody she knows where you will falter and give up she knows the degree of mediocrity you will settle for and she knows your true capacity as a full man a man uh, of free conscious uh, of free consciousness and love her gift, if she is a good woman, is to test you with her darkest moods over and over and over. And I would add over and over and over. <laughs> Until your consciousness is unperturbed by, by feminine challenge and you are able to uh, pervade her with your love just as you are uh, here to pervade the world. In response 
to your fearless consciousness, she will drench your world in love and light. And that, I mean, it's really amazing. Um, It's really, really amazing because I just don't see um, that being said enough. I see a lot of it is just be like, fuck it, I'm a man. I do what I want and blah, blah. Honey, um, can I... Can I do, uh, please go see my friends. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Bullshit it's like posturing he... on one side and then, yeah. um, you know, child, childish, uh, adult boy behavior on the other side and, and Correct. Like massive, massive swings between the two and no honesty. And she can feel that no integrity and she can feel that and you don't respect yourself. So how can she respect you? Yep. And, and it's, it's 100% true because that is what the, the and and it's a it's a quote somewhere and I'm stealing it or this idea but uh but basically a woman is is the greatest mirror a man can have because she's gonna reflect back at you um not what you want to see but who you truly are and you know if if you you know you tell her you're not doing whatever you're not pulling your weight around the house you're not doing what needs to be done she's going to make you aware of that fact and whether you uh, want it or not (laughs) yeah whether you want it or and if you you probably don't want it um you know she's that that reminder that you're not doing what you could be doing you're not you're not a hundred percent what you could be and she wants you at your best that is what she wants again we're also talking about a good woman, not a psychotic woman. So, uh, and, um, and that's it. That is a an, an important caveat there. Uh, <laughs> yes. Most women, most women are pretty decent. Um, and, you, and, m- and yeah, and that's you. But, it's sort of that bell curve, right? But, so, you, most women are pretty decent. Some women are exceptional. Some women are complete garbage. True. However, unlike uh, unlike men, when you are a strong man you will be surprised at the amazing things that will come out of that woman that seemed like she was only mediocre when you can really be in that strong masculine state that you're in. Um, yep. And, and which is one of the things he talks about how to do, how to unleash that. It's great. Matt, I want to, I want to ask you one more, one more uh, book here. Cause okay. you know, we can't dig into every one of these. Um, we'll be digging into bits and pieces of them going forward and other books as well. But um because it's the oldest book on the list and because it's the book that's quoted the most um, kind of like tangentially, but never practically. I've, I've seen I've yet to see a single place where people actually quote Machiavelli. Um, let's uh, tell me about why you included the prince and and a little bit about the actual book itself. Like, what is it? Um, what is it for? Why does it exist? And why is it important for for guys to read other than the fact that, okay, we need to we need to learn what not to do? Well, so what's interesting about it is uh, Machiavelli really wrote this to after he got kicked out of of um, Florence, um, he got kicked out and he was trying to regain favor. So he was writing this as his sort of thing to regain favor. Uh, his the book really wasn't received very well in his in his day um and a lot of it was i look at this as this is 48 laws of power that's what this book is i don't think 48 laws of power would exist without this book i maybe that's a little bold of a statement but it's it is the 48 laws of power in that time where it's really an amoral look at power and grabbing power and how to achieve power, how best to, to do it, whether it, you know, power for power's sake. And, um, you know, for me, it's, it's good because I like the timelessness of this book. Again, it's not a moral guide. Um, and if you read it as a moral guide that there may be something wrong with you. Um, I mean, there's a there's a term Machiavellian uh, that we use now, and that means cunning and scheming and unscrupulous, right? That's what it means. So um, I think that's sort of how people, the lens that they look at it, where it all it is is unscrupulous, just means without scruples, you don't care. You're it's an amoral way of looking at it. I like it because there's great lessons in this book. I mean, if you just Google. Um, the prince and then quotes 
you'll see tons of stuff. There's so many good quotes on this book. Like, uh, I mean, one of my favorite ones, One, it's a one-liner. Everyone sees what you appear to be. Few experience what you really are. Mm-hmm. And it's this idea. This is like predating our modern psychology, but that is absolutely a true statement. We all have a facade that we are putting out to the world to some degree. And few are really seeing the true you. You know, that's an interesting interesting thing uh, it just made me think of. So he's writing during the, the time of the, uh, is the, the Medici's. Yeah, yeah. Um, or me, I've heard it Medici or Medici or whatever. Okay. There's, if, if you're an Assassin's Creed video game fan, uh, you're you're well aware of uh, this time in Italy because that's <laughs> I think one one of the games or two of them. I don't know. There's a few that are, that are kind of set in that time. So. Working working with that working with that time period, and yep. you have you have the court is continuously at play. You have um, political power is um, a daily occurrence for that kind of like elite upper class that has um kind of like their tendrils are spread out into all of the parts of society there and so you would have what you appear to be what everyone knows that you are and and how the parties that you throw and the outfits that you wear and how you present yourselves publicly and and you know the various musicians that you have and the sculptors that you hire and and all of the kind of the external trappings and then what you at who and what you actually are um kind of behind the scenes and the backstabbing and the manipulation and the lies and the the various power plays and um it's like a, a two-part life that you have the more popular and the more powerful you are on the surface the more you have to pretend that you're one way where in the rest of your life you're a different person i can see there's a lot of application conceptually to the instagram and facebook era <laughs> yep where we are all one kind of a person online and we kind of like accept this other person's digital face and this like social life that everyone knows about um, via what we por- portray either through social media or, or through our political kind of connections and, and interactions. But then when we actually are underneath all of that stuff um, is not that in many cases. Um, and it seems in, in some ways that it's mirrors very similarly our, our modern social media era, that, that kind of the setting that Machiavelli writes from. Yeah, and, and I mean it is. It's very true. There's a there's a lot of direct correlations, and like I said, this was written, you know, this was written in Italy. Uh, this was written 500 years ago, um, but it's still completely applicable to today. I I just, you know, it, it it's great and it's a good it's a it's a good thing to read, and it's written as a. It uh, as an advice to somebody how to be a prince, so how to how to rule, how to have power, how to you know gain favor, maintain power, all that. It, it's great. It and I, and I just like it because of the timelessness of that book. Again, a five hundred year old book, which makes you wonder exactly how much have we learned as a society um, <laughs> well, in in five hundred years. Yeah, if you don't if you don't understand the the past, uh, and 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 get the life lessons of the past how are you going to change off stuff in in the uh in the future so um absolutely absolutely true so these are these are the top 10 books every man must read uh once again can't hurt me david goggins extreme ownership jocko willink leif babin prince by machiavelli 12 rules for life an antidote to chaos and i just feel sad not even mentioning that at all i know i know um, but you know Jordan Peter the the incredible Jordan Peterson 1984 by Orwell 48 Laws of Power Green Rational Male Rolla Tomasi Way of the Superior Man David Data Mindful Attraction Plan Athol K and the Way of Men by Jack Donovan um, the it, our Instagram group added four extra books to this list and alluded to to others um, so we want to throw those up quick here uh, Starship Troopers by Robert Heinlein. Um, who Heinlein? If you have, if you want fiction and especially science fiction that's gonna make you think, um, Robert Heinlein, just read read his stuff. Stranger in a Strange Land blew my mind. It was actually the beginning of the concept of a commune and free love. It came from that book. Starship Troopers, another excellent book. Gates of Fire, Stephen Pressfield, Atlas Shrugged, um, 
by Anne Rand. Uh, tremendous, tremendous book. Um, it's going to force you to think about like how you look at society. Walden, Henry David Thoreau, um, and and many others. Uh, we want to hear your list. So those are those are some great ones. Thanks, guys, for for posting that on our Real Superior Men Instagram page. Um, but send us yours. We we want to know what you think what is your top 10 um do you have any of the same books on on your list maybe you have a totally different top 10 list uh we'd love to hear it yep thank you guys for uh for listening all the way to the end appreciate it uh like share subscribe all that wonderful stuff uh on behalf of jathan thank you for listening and as always stay superior you just listened to the Superior Men podcast. If you enjoyed our show, make sure to subscribe so you can hear all of our best content. And if you want to help your friends get smarter, make sure to share this episode with them. For more information about this podcast and hundreds of ways you can upgrade your life, visit us online at wearesuperiormen.com. Remember, gentlemen, live superior.